Alright everybody, welcome back to our continuing series on C++ tutorials. Just wanted to talk a little bit about a more complex way of handling programs. So far, everything has just been input and output. There's been no checking for values, there's been no testing, there's been no anything. It's just been very simple. And that type of program is called simple statement. And, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. There are there's definitely uh, a lot of value to that type of programming, but with what most people want to do nowadays, it's not really valid. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to uh, kind of build off of a previous example. We're going to take an int and call it i item quan. In this case, quantity or quan is just short for quantity. Uh, and then we're just going to say, well, actually, let's call it item num. I really don't like having half a word there. Okay. And then we're going to have double item cost. And we're going to allow the user to enter in how many items they have and how, many, and how much it costs. So what we're going to do is we're going to say see out um, how many items do you have and then we're going to do a simple cn for i item num and then a c out again for how much each item costs. We're going to ask how much does each item cost? So again, pretty simple. And I'm just going to toss a D before that and do it properly, sort of. Okay. And I forgot the semicolon. So all right. We end up with our uh, two values, you know, being being taken in. So let's say we want to charge a different tax rate based off of how much we're charging. So I'm making this line a comma. So let's or a comment rather. Let's say that we want to charge five percent tax on any item below. Uh, let's say. Five hundred dollars and six percent on any item above uh, five hundred dollars. Okay, so just an FYI, this is a comment. It's not going to get included in the compiler. You can put them anywhere as long as it's at the beginning or end of a line. Um, you can do it to make it so statements don't run, anything like that. Um, I might make a video specifically about that and put it at the start of the series. I haven't decided. Um, as long as, you know, you're doing this just from your own home, you probably won't need comments yet. Um, maybe I'll touch on that next video before I do anything. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use an if statement to determine whether or not our uh, cost is going to be greater or less than 500. So what we're just going to do is we're going to do d item cost and we're just going to toss in a less than sign 500.00. In that case that can really just be appended to 500. We're going to toss in some scope operators um, and then anything we type in here is only going to be used inside of this uh, if statement. Also, just a note about these scope operators, if you ever do more than one thing inside of an if, they are required. Just wanted to make that known. I didn't know that when I learned C++, so I just did you a favor. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to come up here and declare a new variable, call it dtax, 
since I guess that's what we're figuring out here. And we're going to do uh, I item num multiplied by D item cost. And that's what D tax is going to equal. So at this point, it's actually going to equal the total of how much these two would cost. So what we can actually do is leave that as it is for right now because I'm going to do something very tricky and I want you to see what I'm going to do. It's going to show you that we can use one variable for multiple things. And then the other half of an if is an else. And in this case, since we've already tested for below 500, that means that automatically this is going to be testing for above 500. So since that's below, this is automatically above. So what we're going to do is we're just going to type in uh, our brackets. And then we're just going to do... Um, well, actually, I have, to, I have to change this because it would be the same thing. Okay. Fine. I was going to do something fun, but I can't. So we're going to come back up here. And we're going to do dtax multiplied by equal. That's the same compound operator that we saw earlier on in the series. And we're going to do by 0 0.05. And that's going to give us just our tax. Uh, we're going to come up here and add another one called d total, Just for the sake of doing so. And what we can actually do is do d total equals that, and then uh, d tax equals d total multiplied by 0 0.05. And that's going to be a little easier because now we can really just copy paste this and drop it into our else statement. We're going to just have to change this one number right here. So this is going to be the total amount, and that's the amount of tax. So we're going to make one more variable called uh, DGT, and that's going to be our grand total. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do a C out, and we're going to say the subtotal of the items is, and that's going to be d total. And then uh, the tax on, actually, you know what? We're going to make this a new line just to make it pretty. These items is, same thing d tax and lastly new line again so the grand total of your order is and we're going to do d g t and as long as the sun and the moon and the stars all align this should work and it would appear as though I have left something out here. What have I forgotten? Expected primary expression. That means that I've forgotten something. Oh, you know what I'll do? Just going to initialize these all to zero, just because that's good practice for one. Um, what am I missing here? Hmm. Ah, there it is. If you notice, I put in a semicolon there. Don't do that. <laughs>
And again, that's our debugger coming in to save us. How many items do we have? Say I have 500 of an item. And each one costs ten dollars means that the subtotal is five thousand there's going to be two hundred fifty dollars tax ooh and it looks like the grand total did not get used properly because I actually never set it so again this is that logic error that I love talking about so much so we're going to take DGT and set that equal to D total plus D tax. Um, to be technical, you could just put D total plus D tax right here. I like setting a variable to show you guys what I'm doing. So same idea. We have 500 of an item, 10 each, and there you go. And that leaves us with our final output of 5250. And just to include that one line from lesson number four, we're going to come up here and include IOMNIP. And then we are going to come down here, type in set iOS flags, iOS fixed. Oh, almost had it. Set iOS flags, iOS show point and set precision to and one more run of our program should show us how we want it to be displayed we'll just type 500 items at 10 bucks a pop again and there you go well i hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions or any concerns that you need addressed please let me know i'll be more than happy to help you guys out for now, I'm Damien. Thanks for tuning in.